不入麦克印酒店，尊享顶级苏格兰式的殷勤款待，请尽在布满艺术感的卧室休憩，也可在酒吧品尝浓郁珍藏酒品。The m c k i n o Hotel， 向君承诺，终身难忘之旅程。Voyage, but if you can choose which one it will be your favorite character that you want to play, that I've not played, a character that I've not played that I'd like to play. What, what do you mean? I've, well, I've never played Lady Macbeth, but I'd like to play Lady Macbeth. Ah,、oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Why that?、Uh, I think she's got a great story,、mm-hmm. and I think she's got very nice material that Sarah Dowling created.、Um, And I think that she doesn't do very many stairs, which is nice for my knees. And she's on her own a lot, which is nice for me as a, as a sort of yeah. I think it's kind of nice to be on your own, and to sort of be in control of your show very much. So you would like doing a show in yourself?、Uh, it's nice. She has a nice sort of mix. She sees a few people every now and then, but lots of her story is driven by her own, her mania and her guilt. And I think that that. Uh, to sort of be able to craft that show without other people、uh, being in it is quite tricky and would be a challenge. So I think that'd be really interesting. So as a dancer, for how long have you prepared for Sleep No More?、Um, I guess you never stop preparing for anything as a dancer. The nice thing about dancing, I think, the, one of the best things about the career and why you never really get bored of being a dancer is that you're expected to continually grow and continually learn. I think we're the only profession who daily does a class. So every morning you do class, and every morning you're expected to collect more information and to continue to grow as a dance artist. And so I think that all of that information goes into everything that you do. When is the first time you know Shakespeare? I mean, I can remember sort of there was beautiful animations of Shakespeare stories that were quite short、um, for children on the television, and I remember learning. Um, Romeo and Juliet at school when I was about thirteen, and that was sort of a text that we got exam examinated on, and I learnt Hamlet, and then I did quite a lot of sort of Shakespearean acting、mm-hmm. uh, when I was a teenager, and sort of learnt.、Um, I mean, I can still recite lots of them today.、Uh, lots of little、uh, speeches from different plays,、uh, and you sort of learn about the iambic pentameter and the rhythm. Wherefore rejoice! What conquest brings thee home?、Mm-hmm. And it's, every sort of line's got ten beats in it, and every other beat has a, a stress in it. So you have to sort of learn how to talk the rhythm of it, because it's actually they're kind of like long poems,、um, and so that was kind of my my first experience was kind of watching it and then trying it out as sort of little solos. We know that in Britain that the actor and actress is they need to have Shakespeare stage experience. And this is vital. Do, do you think why is that? I mean, I think Shakespeare for anyone who grows up in England is so sort of ingrained in our culture. Whether it's sort of little sayings that people say, I think people have, we have lots of little sayings that you don't even realise come from Shakespeare, but that we are constantly talking in a Shakespearean、uh, quotes, and we get taught it in school, and it's very much part of. Our childhood and our heritage, and whether it's sort of the actual space of the Globe Theatre and the sort of the the history of it burning down, and and then these amazing Shakespearean actors who have come through the generations. I think that it's、um, it's kind of a rite of passage that you have to learn that that、um, that text, those texts, and that way of performing and the history of that. I think also the stories are so good. I think the reason why Shakespeare is still around today is that it's actually really good.、Mm. I mean, lots of them are stole from Greek stories, but、um, it's really good stuff. And I mean, especially Macbeth, the language is so dense. It's quite a short play because King James, who was the, ja- the king when、um, Macbeth was written, he didn't have a very long attention span. So the play is very short, but it's very dense with amazing, beautiful imagery. What will you do before? Um, every show starts in Sleep No More. For Sleep No More, I have a series of sort of exercises that I do,、um, which are about 
your brain connecting to your body and certain pathways through your body. Uh, and then I do quite a bit of improvising um, because I feel like for this show, especially where the audience is moving around, mm -hmm. um, it's really good to have your brain very awake and to have your body and your brain seeing and reacting. And I also just like to put my headphones in and sort of get into a, a mode on my own and um, just have a bit of time dancing around. And also because I think that when you do the same show often, it's nice to uh, excite yourself with different dances and to remember how much you love moving. Uh, is there any brilliant experience in Sleep No More that you can share with us? I think that uh, our creative director, our artistic director, Felix, he always talks about the show being a gift. So for Punch Drunk, it's very much that the performers are giving the audience a gift. And I think that there's so many instances where you were, which are really pleasurable and amazing about sort of, it could be the smallest thing where you kind of feel like you give your show to someone else and that kind of generosity. And that experience for the audience, I think, is really special. And that happens, luckily, not once, but multiple times every night. So I think that that's, um, yeah. I think there's not necessarily one special moment. They're all equally as amazing. Uh, during the show, is it hard for you to touch the audience? Or maybe they will, you know, get too close? I mean, the audience get quite close, but there's m lots of moments in the show which it's in the choreography to touch the audience. Mm. So especially for the character that I play, the boy witch, he does have physical interaction in a very set, specific way with the audience to try and create a theatrical experience for them. I hope that people understand the rules enough that they're never shocked by the touch and that also that they're, they see it coming always. So it's never too unexpected, but it always feels um, spontaneous and it always feels special and unique to them as an individual. After Sleep No More, do you have any future plans? No. Yeah. Um, uh, right now, my plan is to be in China for a bit longer and then after that, I'm not sure. Let's see where the where Sleep No More or where Punch Chunk take me or where I take myself. Where the river goes. Wherever the river goes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thanks for joining us, Connor. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sit here.